there. This is the first recording for the semester. And before we get started, please make sure that you have the correct note packet. Your note packet should say MAC 1114 Trigonometry Notes and should have my name, which is Joanne Kakasik Dye. If it doesn't say that, that just means that you probably have the wrong uh, instructor's note packet. So please go back to the Dale Mabry bookstore and you know alleviate that. So uh, if we move forward, we're going to go into Unit 1, and Unit 1 covers Chapter 7. And the first section in Chapter 7 that we're going to look at today is called Angles and Their Measures. So the first objective that we see here is we're going to be converting between decimals and degrees, minutes, seconds, measures for angles. So before we do that, we have to talk about what is an angle. Uh, so the first example we have here, and I'm going to make a little star so you guys know what I'm looking at, the first example, we see that if we want to have an angle, we have to take two rays and connect them at the vertex, okay, which is that end point. When you connect two uh, rays together, we get what's called a vertex. Uh, so the initial side is at the base, and the terminal side is where the angle ends. So this first example that I start, we see that we have counterclockwise rotation, thus making it a positive angle. So positive angles move in a counterclockwise rotation. Another example is the third example here. It's also a positive angle because we are moving counterclockwise. So we see here we have the initial side, we've moved around and we've come back up around and then a little bit more to hit the terminal side. So this is a clockwise rotation showing a positive angle. And by the way, when we talk about degrees, we're going to see that that angle surpassed 360 degrees and went a little bit more. Okay. And finally, we can have negative angles as well. So to show a negative angle, and I'll put this one in blue, a negative angle has clockwise rotation. So it moves in a clockwise uh, manner, starting at the initial side and ending at the terminal side. Okay, so angles can be positive or they can be negative. And once again, it's counterintuitive because you'd think that the positive angles would move in a clockwise rotation, but it actually moves in a counterclockwise rotation. The next thing we need to talk about before we convert back and forth between degrees, minutes, seconds, and, and such is we have to talk about quadrants. So if I take a one rotation around, one rotation around will allow me to rotate 360 degrees. So if I take 360 degrees and I break it into four equal sections, then I will see that there's 90 degrees, uh, a 90 degree degrees angle between each one. So 90 degree angles usually have a square. And by the way, we don't put those in with trigonometry, but I wanted you to know that just in case you took geometry and remember it. Uh, so if we go 90 degrees from zero, we're going to get 90 degrees. And if we add 90 degrees to 90 degrees, we're going to get 180 degrees. And if we add 90 degrees to that, we get 270. And finally, 90 degrees to that will bring us up to 360. So this allows me to break up one rotation into four equal parts, and we call them quadrant number one, quadrant number two, quadrant number three, and quadrant number four. And this allows us to identify where the angle is. So I, I have below here angles in standard position. So if you want to draw an angle in standard position, an angle in standard position will have its terminal side at zero degrees. And let me fix that so that shouldn't say terminal, that should say initial. So it's initial side at zero degrees. So let's see some examples of that. Uh, by the way, initial means starting place. 
So we have to have this at zero degrees. So if I'm going to do an example of, let's say, uh, 115 degree angle. So if I wanted to graph that, uh, first of all, I want to label these as zero, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, and then furthermore, 360. So those are my what's called quadrant angles. So 115 I know is in between 90 and 180. So its terminal side is going to be somewhere in here. And um, this is what that 115 angle would look like. So if we do another example, let's do another positive angle. Uh, once again, I use the quadrant angles, which are 0, 90, 180, 270, and then 360. So let's do an example where we're going to have to graph let's do 315 degrees. Um, so I know 350 degrees is be between 270 and 360. So first I do the initial side on the zero degrees and then its terminal side is going to be somewhere around in here. And to show that positive rotation I'm going to rotate this counterclockwise. Okay. Um, so uh, let's just talk about where these angles lie. So the first example, I had to graph 115 degrees. That's in quadrant two. Okay. Uh, the second example, I had to graph 315 degrees. I can see that's in quadrant four. And finally, let's do another example. I'm going to graph negative 120 degrees. So if I have a negative angle, when I write out the quadrant angles, I'm going to go in a clockwise manner. So this is going to be 0, negative 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 270 degrees, and finally negative 360 degrees. So once again, I'm moving in a counterclockwise manner. So negative 120 is in between negative 90 and negative 180. So to graph this angle, and I'll do it in a different color, once again, the initial side still is going to be at zero if it's a standard angle. Uh, its terminal side will be somewhere in here. So I'm going to put this right here. And once again, we're moving clockwise because this is a negative angle. So my angle, it still lies in quadrant three. So the quadrants don't change up, uh, but it is a negative angle. So once again, if an angle is in standard position, it will have its initial side at zero degrees and its terminal side will be in one of the four quadrant angles or it'll be on one of the, excuse me, it'll be one of the four quadrants or on one of the quadrant angles. So let's see an example in a couple minutes where we have to draw those out. So now that I, I've kind of loosely have used the terminology degrees, let's go ahead and define it. So one degree, and the symbol for that is a little circle that is uh, used with a superscript, is 100 and 360th of a revolution. Okay, because one revolution around is 360 degrees and looks like a circle. So we can go ahead and draw that in our notes. Okay, a right angle measures 90 degrees and remember each quadrant lies as a right angle from each other. Uh, in geometry when we did a right angle we used the little square. A straight angle if you remember from uh, geometry is 180 degrees and creates a straight line. Uh, so those are two, some examples of things from the past. Um, now that we've defined what a degree is, we can draw each angle in this next example. So in example A, it asks me to graph 75 degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw my quadrant angles. So 0, 90, 180, 270, and finally 360 degrees. The initial side is at 0. So I'm going to graph that in and its terminal side is going to be between 0 
and 90 degrees. So I'm going to graph this out, and my angle is positive. Okay, so this angle is in quadrant number one. The next one, it's a negative angle, negative 270 degree precise. So I have to go ahead and put in my values. So let's do that, zero degrees, negative 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 270, and then back around to negative 360 degrees. And negative 270 is a quadrant angle where the terminal side is on that value, negative 270. So it looks like this. And remember, we've gone clockwise. Whoops. So let's go ahead and put that in as well. Um, if someone asks you what quadrant is that in, it's a quadrant angle. So it's not really in a quadrant. You can say it's in between quadrant one and quadrant two, but it's a quadrant angle. So let's look at the next one, which is 230. So 230 degrees, once again, it's positive. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my values, 0, 90, 180, 270, and then back to 360. And I'm going to draw out my initial side, which is on that x-axis, or the 0 degree mark. And 230 is in between 180 and 270. Uh, so it's about 40 degrees away from 270, and it is positive, so we move in the counterclockwise direction. That angle, the terminal side, is in quadrant number 3. And finally, this last one says 445 degrees. Uh, so let's go ahead and put in the quadrant angle, 0, 90, 180. 270, 360. And I notice with this one, it's 445. So I've rotated past 360. So if I add 90 to 360, I get 450 degrees, right where the 90 degree mark is. So 445 is going to be pretty darn close to that. So I draw in my initial side at zero, the terminal side's right here. I'm going to rotate in a counterclockwise position and show that I've gone up and around and past that point to graph that angle. So 445 degrees is in quadrant number one. All right, so there's some examples of how to draw an angle, whether it be positive or negative, and whether it rotates past the 360 degree mark. So next, uh, what we're going to do for this part one video of a part two series is we're going to convert between decimals and degrees minute seconds and before we do so we have to talk about a little bit of terminology um, so angles angles to be super precise go beyond degree marks and in fact some of them go to degrees minute seconds so one degree is equivalent to 60 minutes uh, so this little mark here means minutes and furthermore, one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So this symbol here means seconds. Uh, so before I go any further, we can convert back and forth to something that's in degrees, minutes, seconds, or something that is in straight decimal. It just depends on what you're working with, what you're going to be doing, uh, remember that in life things aren't exactly perfect, so uh, in order to be a little bit more precise, you might want to go into degrees, minutes, seconds. Some examples would be uh, in radiology. Another example would be maybe building a bridge uh, because land is not completely flat, so you have different angles in which things are going to be pitched. So with that being said, let's look at some of these uh, examples. Remember we're going to be using 60 because one degree equals 60 seconds and one minute equals, excuse me, one degree equals 60 minutes and one minute equals 60 seconds. Uh, so we're either going to be multiplying or dividing by powers of 60 depending on which way we're going. So if we look at part A, it asks us to convert 50 degrees, 6 minutes, 25 seconds to a decimal in degrees. 
if you're going to decimal, you're going to divide. So I'm going to give you a little hint with that. Um, so what we do with this one is we're going to take the 50 degrees and we're going to set it aside. Now we have this six minutes. What I want to do is I want to convert six minutes to degrees. And I know that one degree is equivalent to 60 seconds, okay? So with that being said, that one degree equals 60 minutes. I keep on saying seconds on accident. I'm not trying to confuse you, I promise. So one degree equals 60 minutes. What we're going to do here is take the six and divide it by 60. And if we do that and reduce it, we get one tenth or 0.10 in decimal. So I'm gonna hold on to this for a second. So I'm gonna hold on for the 50 degrees 0.10 degrees and now we have to look at this which is the 25 seconds so the 25 seconds what I'm going to do is I want to convert that to degrees now remember 25 seconds is two places down from a degree mark so there are actually 3600 seconds in one degree so I'm going to place that 25 over 3,600. And I got 3,600 by multiplying 60 times 60. Okay, so once again, we have to move down two units because I'm in seconds and I have to get back to degrees. So when I divide those two, I get 0 0.0069. And remember, this is in degrees. So my last step with this is to add everybody together. So 50 plus... 0.10 plus 0 0.0069. Remember, all these are in degrees. And when I add them together, I get 50.1069 degrees. So this is how we convert from degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal. Now for part B, we're working backwards. We're starting with a decimal, 22.257 degrees. And I want this to go to degrees, minutes, seconds, okay? Degrees, minutes, seconds has a capital M. That's going to stand for multiply, okay? So we're going to take the 22 degrees and we're going to set that aside. And I'm going to deal with this 0.257. Now, if I want minutes, I'm going to multiply that by 60 because remember there are 60 minutes in a degree. That's why I'm doing this. And when I multiply those together, I get 15.420. I'm going to take and use a 15 because that's the whole portion of my answer. And that's uh, in, remember, that's in minutes. Okay, so I have my degree, I have my minutes. Now I want my seconds. So I'm going to take that latter part of that value, the decimal portion of it, the 0 0.420, remember I'm in minutes, so if I want to go from minutes to seconds, I'm going to multiply by 60, not 360, because remember that's two steps away, so I'm only one step away from seconds. And when I multiply 0 0.420 by 60, I get 25.2. So once again, I'm going to use the, the whole portion of that, the 25, and remember that's in seconds. So my answer is going to be 22 degrees, 15 minutes, and 25 seconds. And that is your answer for part B. And this will conclude part one of 7.1.